very strong knockback on smash attacks. Like, definitely goes underestimated at times. Yeah, with Kirby, it's just a. Uh... He doesn't really have like good base stats as a character, so it can just get abused by characters that have like really good mobility, like good damage output, um, better like range with their hitboxes, like those types of things. Curry can really struggle, but he does get like the benefit of being an uncommon character, you know. So like if you have a really good player playing this character and like your opponent's not prepared for what Kirby does, it it, it can overwhelm people. Even though Kirby's not an amazing character or anything. Oh, he could kill here? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought he would go for a down B since that's like much easier to not mess up, but Jen is actually amazing at this game, so he can yeah. he can just spike Ness out of his up B without trading. Okay, yeah. Good anti air up smash. Kirby's yeah. still really light, so he he's gotta be careful about situations like that, like trying to overextend and then getting Ants here. By Ness. Excellent oh, back in here. Oh, he's oh, dead. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah. And that was smart, too. Really smart. Yeah, yeah, that was very smart. But not only that, like, we can see that PK Chris lost his ability to make the recovery because, like I said, a lot of players go for directional air dodges to tech on the stage because it's easier that way. And a lot of players end up losing stocks that way, too. It's kind of a give and take. What a good nair right, to right, trade, right, yeah. yeah. Yep, in there. Yeah, just is uh, really cognizant of his options as Kirby and disadvantage. It's actually pretty impressive. It's not as easy to get a read on when he's open to get counterattacked, even when you're playing a character like Ness. Yeah. And let uh, Oh. Okay. Edge guard here for a judge out, looking for a possible opportunity to get this edge guard properly. Good choice of down smash, just because it does extend a little bit over the ledge, and it can definitely catch Ness. He's not gonna have to worry about angling the shield. Oh, nobody oh. does, and it causes a shield break. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually really funny. Honestly, uh, yeah, I guess he wanted to try to see if he can get a shield release parry on that. Um, yeah. That was looking like that was a situation, too, because Kirby's one of the few characters that doesn't necessarily have to worry about angling shields. Yoshi's another one. That doesn't have to worry about angling shields just because of the way the character's profile is or Yoshi's egg as a shield is. But nonetheless, Jeja will get this neutral air pretty fast. Low cooldown here. He will stop PK Chris at high percents. Okay, when it's up to PK Thunder, Jeja keeps the pressure at the ledge. Neutral air yet again. He's got the ledge here. Respecting the PK cross, but this does give PK Chris the opportunity to go for PK Thunder and get closer to the stage. Oh, uh, wow. wow. So with the eye too. Mm -hmm. oh, oh no! Oh. He started his up too far from. Like yeah, him. he did. I wonder if he had a double jump when he got F tilted there. At the no, he didn't. Sure. I think I he so he lost the double jump because he had already committed to using that to try to get back on the stage, and that and since he didn't touch the ledge or touch the stage, he lost his double jump there. So he burned it. He would have been fine if he had not tried to go for that earlier. But unfortunately, Jaja with that forward tilt kind of like was the one thing that took it all the way from PK Chris. Uh, but you know what won't take it all the way is Exia with the tier ones up for 62 months. Jesus, oh. man. Thank you, Exia, for 62 months. Yeah, greatly, greatly you. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Back on Pokemon Stadium 2. If anything, uh, PK Chris didn't have an easy time that match, but he definitely stayed resilient even though he was losing the whole time. Yeah. Like, he, he was actually doing a decent job of bringing it back at the end. I think he's just really uh, confident in his game plan to the point where he's not really trying to switch up too much. Yeah. Good for Jack Jack going for a higher recovery here. And this is good too because he can always use stone. And we know that Jeja can cancel Stone at the right time to avoid going for like SDs or things like that. And Stone's a pretty decent way for Kirby to get back on the stage, even at the ledge. That's going to be a forward air. Pushes advantage here on the stage. Holds the shield against PK Cross. That's Ooh, the one nice. thing I like about Jeja, too. He doesn't let go. He literally will say, I'll respect this move, but I'll still hold the ledge, where other players might try to shield it or get away. And that's what PK Chris wants. That time to get back on the stage. In that situation, Jeja's never going to give it to him. 
I really like that he's uh, so good at edge guarding with Kirby. And it just pays off a lot against a character like Ness, who has a, such an exploitable uh, way to get back to the stage. Nice. Oof. Oh, kind of yeah. greedy with that up smash, but it's actually very strong. So I don't blame him. And even like good Ness players will just hold into you a lot of times because they that just want to use their air mobility. If he caught P.K. and Chris sleeping, though, he probably would have just flat out died, but. Didn't fall for it. Still has a pretty decent lead here. Oh, that was actually very smart cancel on the down beat. Told you, he's really good at canceling that stone. What oh. a great angle on the floor until here. He might die here. Oh, okay, he went for a safer uh, two frame attempt with the down smash. Yeah, and he went I, for I thought he was on stage. Same, I thought he might have gone on stage, but I still like that Jeja also went for a back out of shield just to cover the potential roll from PK Chris because he got on the ledge. Normally, Ness might try to go for a roll or a side stall. Oh, and that's Ooh, a that re-grab here. That's big damage for a back nice. air. Yes, indeed. Another one. Oh, got the jump. <gasps> oh, he went for the wrong way. Mm, oh, damn, the two got frame. the two-frame? That's crazy. He still yeah, doesn't it's... have a jump. He could have just killed him here, but he went for a down smash. Yeah, and this is why we see Jetja go for that down smash. It two-frames at the ledge, but it also causes those hitboxes to stick out just enough here. Another forward tilt, low cooldown. That's why you see him again. go for it. <laughs> Like that lower angle that uh, PA Chris is forced to recover to all the time, like Kirby can easily down B that, down air it, while he's yeah. just gonna keep up to him. This all is the right. same thing that we saw from Kirash, where he goes for down tilt, low cooldown, <laughs> sticks away from the ledge, really good. He's just going for an up throw kill here, under the platform. Mm, nice, holds the shield. Careful on the no parry here. Point. Yeah, no shield. Oh, no shield he break. got out. Yeah, up air. Oh, no. <laughs> I respect it, though. He wanted to go low enough so he can get the final cutter from a, from a certain distance to not worry about getting two-framed himself. Missed back right here. Judge, I'm playing the safe as possible. Yep. He knows. A lot of are killing Nets right now. Oh, this is good for PK, Chris. That's an up throw. Platform extension. Yes. Yeah. He even got the extra pummels in there, too, just to make sure. That was actually good DI at the end, too, from PK Chris, but you just have that perfect percent for that to kill. Perfect percent indeed, Strides.